Hey folks, yes, it is a crunchy, icy day here in November, and we're out with the Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro. So in this video, we're gonna find out how good this SUV is off-road once we hit the mud, rocks, and water. Make sure you stay tuned. Before we hit the off-road trails, let me get all the numbers out of the way. So first of all, powering this Sequoia TRD Pro, a three and a half liter twin turbo V6 hybrid that makes 437 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque sent through a 10-speed automatic. Now, because this is the TRD Pro, it does get a lift. So overall ground clearance here is brought up to 9.1 inches, and that is the most in the Sequoia lineup. The suspension, of course, is fully revised. We get a set of Fox two and a half inch internal bypass shocks. And then the biggest change here, in my opinion anyways, is wheels and tires. A set of 18 inch BBS forged wheels and 33 inch Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tires. Now the other important numbers, of course, approach and departure angles. Approach on this thing, 23 degrees and departure is 20 degrees. And those are numbers we're definitely gonna to put to the test. And right now, before we head out there, why don't we put it up on the ramp and see what it looks like underneath. So now we've got the Sequoia up on the truck ramp so we can look underneath. And the first thing I have to point out is the lack of front tow hooks. If you're familiar with the new Tundra, well, Sequoia is the same platform. So just like that truck, there's no tow hooks in the front. Now up under here, there are some kind of holes in the front section of the frame right here in this cross member or even here in the front of the skid plate. So if you had to recover this thing on the front, of course you could find a place, but it's frustrating, right? That Toyota couldn't put tow hooks in. And of course I always, even myself, I think about tow hooks as pulling this vehicle out, but sometimes it's about pulling something else that's in front of you. You're going down the trail, there's a big log there and you have to pull it out of the way, but you can't turn around. Well, the lack of front tow hooks makes situations like that pretty annoying. So definitely a miss by Toyota. And thankfully they didn't make that mistake with the Tacoma. So no tow hooks, but then we get back to this massive TRD skid plate and that is an aluminum skid plate. This is my magnet and see it will not stick. So Toyota always goes with these big aluminum skid plates in the front. It looks really good. You can even see this thing when the Sequoia is just sitting there in the parking lot. And yeah, quite frankly, it looks cool. A bit of a gap between the front bumper and the skid plate, which I don't love right here. It'd be nice to have that covered up too, but still a beefy front skid plate. And then you can see TRD Pro, you're getting a unique sway bar here. That's different from other Sequoia models. And up in there, you're getting your Fox shocks in the front end. So as we roll back, I can show you our little tiny differential skid plate, or I should say uh, transfer case skid plate. And that one is actually steel. So we have a mixed material approach here. And then the third skid plate on this vehicle is right over here. It's for the fuel tank. And that guy is actually plastic. And of course that's an oversimplification. This is actually a plastic polymer material, which is blended with other things to make it even stronger than just standard plastic. So that's on your fuel tank. And then yes, at the rear end, I already pointed out the Fox shocks where you got a bigger set back there with remote reservoirs. And then finally at the very back, your full size spare tire. Hey everybody, listen, you've heard us talk about the giddy ups here on the Truck King channel. So this is a new set that I've got in my truck. Now these, unlike the synthetic simple ones that we sold out of last summer, are handmade, all leather, hand stitched. These are unique, these are one of a kind, all made by John out there in Alberta, Canada. And if you're interested in these for your truck, all you have to do is reach out to us at hey at Truck King, 
truckking.ca. That's H-E-Y at truckking.ca. We'll send you photos, prices, and delivery information. Do that soon. Let me show you those off-road cameras right now. So here in the Sequoia TRD Pro, we're gonna shift down into four low. And when you do that, this camera screen automatically comes up because they assume you're ready to go off-road. So you have your front nose view right there. You can also get a rear view, a rear wide view if you want it. And then the inclinometer comes up automatically, but easily the coolest feature in off-road mode is right here. It actually shows you what's underneath your Sequoia. See, as we rolled forward there, it started to take image from, images from in front of the SUV, and then they superimposed this little SUV on top of them. So yeah, as you roll down the trail, you can actually see where you are in relation to, let's say, that rock you just ran over. That is a legitimately helpful feature when you're off-road. And then finally, one other thing I have to point out, there's the auto button here. When you turn auto on, the cameras will come on every single time you drop to slow speed. So if you're coming to a stop sign or a red light, the camera will come on automatically. And I, uh, I like that feature too. I think it makes a lot of sense. All right, folks, let's jump right into this. First off-road obstacle today is the ditch crossing. I've got it in four high, and I do have the multi-terrain select turn to mud mode. I haven't locked up yet, though. Let's see if this is enough. So, uh, yeah, the ditch crossing here, we've really worn it in with quite a few vehicles, so it has been getting a little easier, but it is a good test of clearance. If you don't have a good approach and departure, you straight up can't do this. And then today we got a little bit of ice just to make things a little more interesting. It's not very thick, so it's breaking up real easy. But it always adds an extra layer of fun. <laughs> so far so good, it's just creeping through. My driver's side is about to start climbing. That's when things get interesting. Right about here. Oh, hello. Close my window before I get muddy water in the face. Okay, I am officially stuck. Okay. So let's go to neutral. Let's lock up my rear end. I'm trying to lock. Okay, I need to go, first of all, four low. Let's see, it will shift into four low. And now let's see if it'll lock up. Okay, I'm in four low and locked. So I got stuck, I turned everything on. Let's see if I can go right from drive right here. Okay, apparently I cannot. I am seriously stuck. A little bit of reverse is the answer now. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> I got stuck on the first obstacle. I'm gonna steer a little more passenger this time. Man, it's feeling turtled. It's feeling like I'm getting no weight onto my wheels. There we go. Okay. Got about halfway out in reverse. Now again, I'm in low and I'm locked. I gotta hit this with a bit of speed. Here we go. And front fascia is not gonna do it. That was a bad sound too. I think I just broke something. Based on Liam's face, I just broke something. Ah, ditch crossing! This is one of those tough one of those tough off-road obstacles where so many vehicles make it look so easy, but if you don't have the front clearance, you just can't do it. I'm trying to... Yeah, okay. So what I'm trying to do is steer passenger side out. If you want to just spot me, I can probably reverse out, but I don't want to pull it the wrong way. So just keep, a, keep an eye on it as I slowly reverse out. How about right now? Yeah, you're good. Seems okay? Oh, yeah. But that was still pretty bad, folks. I gotta go assess the damage now. I just keep basing it on Liam's face. Based on that, it's not good. Let's go look.
Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. That's not good. It's just this plastic fascia piece. Bumper seems fine, but this is definitely, definitely toast. Well, that's unfortunate. The approach angle on the Sequoia TRD Pro is not good, and we just found out firsthand. <laughs> Alrighty, folks. Well, ditch crossing was a straight up fail, um, but we are. We're not going to let that slow us down too much. I can't do any more damage here. I got to tell you that Toyota probably won't be pleased. Sorry, Toyota. I didn't mean to do it on purpose. But uh, yeah, here we are. We got to keep on testing this thing. So now I'm here at our offset ruts. And the whole idea here is to test the lockers and then also just to test the four wheel drive system in general to see how well it works. So I actually took it out of four low, but I'm going to go back into four low real quick. Right. So then I have access to my rear locker. So I'm not locked up. But I am in four low, and the multi-terrain select is once again in... I'm going to put it in rock mode, actually, now, because I want full traction is the idea here. So right here is where it's starting to slip. Oh, but I can feel traction control working. Traction control is working. Nice. That was decent, so that was no locker, that was all traction control. And of course, all modern vehicles do this, but I will say Toyota seemed to do it a little bit better. Basically what it's doing is, it is breaking the tire that's off the ground and slipping, and that is sending power across to the tire that needs it. So I didn't need a locker at all there, and it crawled right through in four low. So that was, uh, that was actually pretty impressive. And honestly, it's like frustrating to get into vehicles like this one where off-road, it feels pretty good. The tires feel pretty good, but the clearance just absolutely lets it down. So I got to tell you, I am not feeling confident. Usually I'm out here saying how confident I'm feeling, but I'm just not feeling that confident today. I'm not sure I want to do the hydro line. I don't want to get that damaged bumper down into any water or ice that it doesn't need to go onto. So I think we're going to head over to the left hook now because there's less standing water and we'll see what kind of traction we can get in the mud and uh, going up the hill. Okay, folks, we came over to the left hook. And even on the way here, I hit a rock that I'm not used to hitting. So as we continue on here, I'm feeling less and less confident. Therefore, we are gonna go as slow as possible, see if we can't nourish this Sequoia through. But I guess this is just a classic example of taking a vehicle that's not really meant to go off-road, like a big heavy SUV and calling it an off-roader. It's just not, you know? Is my fascia clear of the water, Liam? Okay. Camera guy Liam's doing double duty. He's spotting me right now, too, because I just don't want to do any more damage to that fascia. And we're climbing now. So coming through there at super slow speeds, I will give you two positives. The tires actually feel like they're getting okay traction. And then the biggest positive, and I remember feeling this on the Tundra too, is just the amount of low-end torque. You just feel like you have so much low-end power. And I'm in four high right now, I'm not even in low. And it just feels like the low-end is massive. And I think that's mostly thanks to the hybrid setup and having the battery there, right? So definitely nice to have that hybrid power when you're creeping through the woods. And now let's see what it's really made of. We're gonna do the left hook. Now, Positives and negatives to today. It's very cold. It's minus three degrees Celsius and it's been that cold or colder all day. So the ground here, the mud, which is usually very soft, is very, very stiff. So I'm not worried about sinking in. I am still worried about traction in that front fascia though. So I'm just going to try to creep through. Normally I hit this with speed. Today, Speed is not the name of the game. Let's 
So far, so good. This is what I was mentioning about those tires. Feeling okay. I'll also mention right now, it's getting later in the day, and I have my light bar on. Okay, still okay. Have my light bar on and I'm noticing the difference out here in the woods. I actually can see it working. I got a pretty nice field of vision in front of me. So far so good. And of course folks, you know, off-roading, it's always different based on the, the, the weather, the temperature, the conditions. And today, everything's so stiff that I'm just creeping through here and there's no slip whatsoever because again, the mud is just rock solid. Feeling really good so far. Now here comes the biggest test. I'm going to try to break out of the ruts here. Nice. And do a little bit of straddling so I can avoid the deepest section over here. How's my front driver's side tire there, Liam? Is it, is it in the middle? Right about there? A little more passenger? Okay, nice. And we're gonna successfully straddle the rut here. Now going up the hill, I'm gonna give it a bit of power. So here we go. Nice transition, nice, tra oh, oh, my rear end slipped into the rut, but that's okay. Now again, I need a bit of power for making it over these rocks. Over the rocks, on the passenger side. Oh, bounce, bounce. Oh, my mic fell. But nice, nicely done, TRD Pro. So uh, yeah, you know what, I, I'm, I'm going to say positive things about the TRD Pro, but let me start by saying that sometimes it helps to have frozen mud rather than soft mud. But the tires felt good there, the clearances on this section felt okay, still a little bit close for my liking. And then I think what I noticed the most is coming up the hill, bouncing over those rocks, the suspension is really taking care of me. Um, this is, a TRD Pro is generally a package that's meant for high speed off-roading, so bouncing through that stuff. Um, yeah, you could just feel the body was so well controlled and it wasn't beating me up at all. So that's a big advantage of this thing too, which is why off-road great. I think where the TRD Pro Sequoia will absolutely shine is on a really rough, gnarly, rutted out dirt road. Not places where clearance is important, but places where the suspension is important. That's where this thing is really going to come into its own. And as we go down the hill on the left hook, it gives us a chance to use another system here in the Sequoia that is crawl control. So crawl control is off-road cruise control. Toyota was actually the first to do that. They're a pioneer in this segment. Essentially my feet right now are off the gas, off the brake. It's doing everything for me. Uh, this crawl control has six settings. So I'm gonna go to the mid setting. This is the mid speed setting. And again, it's doing everything for me. And I will say that one of the big positives, the initial crawl control system, it used the ABS. So when it pumped pulsed to the brakes, it was really loud. This system doesn't do that anymore. Although I will say it's kind of grabby. It's sort of grab, 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 rather than some systems which are just super smooth. This one's constantly grabbing those brakes sort of aggressively. So that's definitely not that great feeling, but I still prefer it over the old ABS where it just was noisy and sounded horrible, honestly. So now we're down the hill, we use the knob down here in the center, and I'm just going to pick up my speed just a little bit, and we're going to go through another little icy mud hole here, and we will let crawl control do its thing and walk us right through. So at this point I basically say the same thing about all of these off-road cruise control systems. If I owned this vehicle and I was to take it off-road, oh, I'm a little stuck here. It's dealing with it. Nice, that was all crawl control dealing with it, not me at all. Oh, all crawl control again. Uh-oh, I'm getting stuck. I'm getting stuck, come on, crawl control. Come on, crawl control. I'm surprised, okay, I just hit the brake. I'm gonna go down into the lowest crawl control setting. Wow. And I'm once again stuck. Let's try locking up exactly where I sit. Let's just see if the locker makes enough of a difference. So in reverse, okay, there's the locker. Wow, even the locker can't get me out of this hole.
you know what guys, normally I would just hit the gas, but I did that earlier and it didn't work out well, so I gotta get out and look, but this coil is not feeling great to me right now, man. Nothing ever gets stuck over here. I think I'm just turtled. My belly ended up dragging a little bit. So I just need to hit it with a bit of speed, a bit of speed. Come on, 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 come on. There we go. It only needed a little bit, but sometimes you absolutely need momentum, and that was a situation where I needed momentum. Well, did the Sequoia TRD Pro do the left hook? Sure it did, but it didn't, didn't do it that well. I'm just, I'm not feeling great about this package right now. I gotta tell you guys, the clearance is absolutely letting down all of the engineering that went into the four wheel drive and all the off-road systems. So you can have mud mode, sand mode, rut mode, lockers, all that stuff. But if the clearance isn't there, it just doesn't matter. And that, uh, that has to be the verdict here on the Sequoia. Well, folks, we are coming to the end of this video. So what's the verdict? Well, I think it has to be that yes, in terms of the off-road equipment here and the off-road technology, it's all really good, but the Sequoia is entirely let down by its approach, departure, and ground clearance. And I think today's video really kind of reinforces the reason why we do this testing. Because in the marketing, Toyota shows you all of the TRD pros together, the Tacoma, the Tundra, and the Sequoia, all being buddies out playing in the desert. But the truth is, an obstacle that a Tacoma TRD Pro would make look easy was enough to break the Sequoia TRD Pro. So sure, the brand is gonna sell it like all of its off-roaders are just as capable, but that is straight up not the case, and that's what you have to be aware of. So yeah, at the end of this video, I hate to say it, but even though Toyota wants you to think the Sequoia should live off-road, I'm about to head where the Sequoia TRD Pro should actually live, and that's on a paved road. So go below, leave me a comment, let me know what you think of this thing. As always, while you're down below, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to the channel to see what we're testing next. And yeah, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to the TRD Pro's natural habitat. See ya.